The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take care and leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. This video talks about some controversial and potentially triggering topics. Viewer discretion is advised. I don't know how long it's been since I last did a discussion commentary, but now seems to be as good of a time as any. <sighs> so I don't usually talk about hot button trans issues. Not because I don't have thoughts or that I don't want to say something. I mean, I am trans, obviously, I have thoughts. But usually it's out of fear preventing me from saying anything. Being a trans woman myself, I know that anything that I say about something that would affect me in the long run is practically an invitation for the radical opposition to make their way to my page and attack me for caring about something that directly affects my health. And that isn't particularly my ideal of a Saturday afternoon, or whenever this gets posted, frankly. That and I still feel a bit guilty over my gatekeepy and trans medicalist phase. Ugh. However, the discussion surrounding Hogwarts Legacy has been eating away at me. As someone who has also been a very open fan of Harry Potter and the Wizarding World for years now, the recent release of the game has sparked controversy surrounding it, and it's not hard to determine why if you know the relationship between author J.K. Rowling and trans people, particularly trans women like myself. There's been an active boycott, specifically from trans people of the game not wanting to support someone who actively stands out against our rights. And like, if you want my honest and personal stance, while I don't think everyone who buys Hogwarts Legacy is inherently transphobic, I'm a part of a speedrunning community of Harry Potter fans that have previously raised money for the Trevor Project in response to rallying transphobia as an example, I would say they're allies, but I will also say those who buy Legacy might not be as strong of an ally as they might proclaim themselves to be, and it is a little disappointing, all things being said, but we'll talk more about that later. So why have I only now decided to talk about it? Well, that's because, frankly, I'm a little tired of being villainized for being trans. Trans rights has been a huge discussion lately, particularly in whether or not we even should have rights at all. And being an American trans woman in 2023, it's flooring to realize how much people believe I should be afraid for my life. That, and within the community that I associate with, and some of the neighbors who associate by proxy, have been insisting on talking over trans people, saying that this boycott has gone too far, it's pathetic that there's even a boycott at all, I want to play my silly wizard game, and their points continue to misunderstand why people are boycotting this game to even begin with, and why those same people aren't happy with those who purchase the game. In particular, I will be specifically focusing on a video by Blaze the Movie Fan about it. Mostly because one, I know Blaze the Movie Fan more personally. I know he's not malicious, and so I can use this as a discussion instead of my normal response commentary work. And two, his video is short, sweet, and straight to the point. He covers most of the ground of the common talking points, and I feel like it can be very direct with his video. But that's not to say that I won't be calling back to some other persistent arguments I've heard here or there from other videos I've seen on the subject. I also want to make it clear that I'm not here necessarily to be angry at Blaze or to make him feel bad. This is at worst a clear-cut sign of a lack of education or understanding the nuance of the subject, which there is a lot of, despite how few people want to look at it, and I want to use this video more as a discussion and platform to clarify things for really anyone who might not be fully educated on the controversy, not to make him specifically feel like I'm scolding him over his video. Alright? Just to make that clear? Cool. So let's begin. Without being said, the Hogwarts Legacy bus that happened recently, yeah, it's a fucking mess. And yeah, let me make something clear that I 100% would fight against all of that interested towards trans people that I just mentioned in the video. I would fight against all of that. But you aren't helping trans people at all by villainizing people who are simply interested in the game. So this is a notion that I hear a lot by advocates in favor of Hogwarts Legacy just being a game, right? 
And like, I'm not going to say that there's not a possibility that those who are against the game can maybe go a little too far with their distaste of it. Hell, alluding back to the Harry Potter speedrunning community I mentioned earlier that I'm a part of, I've seen streamers get punished for playing any Harry Potter game, much less Hogwarts Legacy. GDQ has banned Harry Potter games from its events, with other events going back and deleting archives of runs because of JK Rowling's more radicalized beliefs. And according to people within that community, they'd get the odd comment calling them turfs and transphobes, with some even going as far as spoiling the game. So, I'm not saying some people couldn't go too far. There's radicals to any cause, after all. But what I do know is that I'm not seeing it nearly as much as people seem to allude it to being. Girlfriend Reviews as an immediate example that would come up offhand as someone who was brought to tears and attacked for playing Hogwarts Legacy wasn't, and later clarified that the story was overall overblown in that regard. And in fact, barring the, again, occasional off-color comment here or there, Overall, just received messages from disappointed fans while streaming because of the money that J.K. Rowling gets. The one about how our decision to review the new Harry Potter made headlines after a clip of me getting quote-unquote bullied off stream went viral. So, I need to set the record straight about a few things. First, I didn't cry, I just got a little verklempt. And even if I was brought to tears, how is that news? I cry every day. Second, not all of what happened that morning on Twitch was bullying. There were a lot of hateful messages deleted by our mod team, but it's Twitch chat, so we're kind of used to that. Many viewers were simply voicing their disappointment. Disappointment based on the fact that buying Hogwarts Legacy puts money in the pocket of JK Rowling, a woman who funds anti-LGBTQ political activity. That is as valid an argument as any to vote with your wallet. So if you're one of those edgelords going around saying, now I'm gonna buy two copies, you are being mean and weird. That said, she does talk about getting suspended on Reddit and having her livelihood hurt in response to streaming it and we'll talk about that later, so we'll keep that off to the side for now. On the other hand, you might bring up the example of Zebla, who claimed she was being attacked for playing the game on stream with a YouTube VOD that gives an obviously hyperbolic example of those disappointed messages that other people had gotten. First, I want to talk about the game a little bit before I get into it, uh, because I've seen some pretty wild shit in my chat. <sighs> Haven't even got started. And uh, I already see some pretty wild shit from people who were like, wow, Zeppla. I never thought that, like, I, I never thought that you were a bigot. I've known you for years. <laughs> I've known you for years and I always thought that you were like such a kind person. You always put others before yourself and uh, you're always so considerate and that's just what the person that you've shown to be for years and years. But now that you've bought this video game, I'm devastated. Now, now that you're in this, now that you've got this video game, everything I know about you, I now see it was a lie. I now see that this whole time, turns out, you were a, you were actually a bigot the whole time. Think about that. But frankly, her whole tirade at the beginning of her stream is not only super dismissive of things I'm also going to have to bring up later in this video, but the fact it's as obviously as hyperbolic as it is shows she's purposely trying to soak the flames for the sake of sticking it to those who were disappointed in the purchase. Straight up admitting to playing the game out of spite for those very same people who were disappointed to begin with, saying that she wasn't actually all that interested until she saw the supposed harassment these other streamers had gotten, specifically citing the spoilers as an example of said harassment. I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you something else. I was actually not going to play this game. Because I personally, I'm not a fan of J.K. Rowling. I do not like J.K. Rowling. I just, you know, for me, I felt like she had kind of soured the whole franchise. And I was just not really, I didn't really have any plans. I wasn't that interested in playing it. But, after seeing the absolutely disgusting behavior by aunties harassing and witch hunting some of the kindest streamers that I know, some of the kindest people that I know, I have seen so many people that I know, these are like incredibly compassionate, thoughtful people they, they don't have a hateful bone in their body. I've seen these people get, uh, had, being witch hunted, literally witch hunted. 
and uh, I've been spoiled. Like I've read all these spoilers, and uh, then I saw this shit going down, and I realized, like I do, I don't want to pass your purity test. I would, I would actually rather that the people who think that you can label somebody a bigot just because they bought a video game or they play a video game. I would like it if all those people would just find me and block me and touch grass. So frankly, if you intend on bringing her up, don't bother. She played the game with the explicit intent of pissing people off. She chose to be antagonistic. I don't really feel that bad for her getting her own disappointed comments in the chat. And I don't really think anyone should. Especially if it's disappointed comments that are really too far and are justifiable in calling something harassment because that's what it seemed like going through these two videos. Like, there wasn't any doxing or death threats. It was, at worst, by what she was ranting about, people just being called hateful. Unless I missed doxing and death threats mentioned in her video, but she hammers in the point of how much being called hateful is harmful to people, so that seemed to be where her priorities laid at the very least. So once again, it seems to boil down to the occasional off-color comments I alluded to within the previous two examples. It simply becomes a case of, you put a hornet's nest, expect to get stung, I guess. And then there's Silvervale. <sighs> I've received so many death threats, and harassment, and doxing, and people doxing my friends, and like, <laughs> so much horrible, vile things, all from streaming a fucking video game. Yeah, this situation is definitely a touchy one, and if you let me digress for a bit. On a surface level overview, this would be the best argument in favor of the notion of people being harassed over playing Hogwarts Legacy, and to be honest, this seems like the most likely situation you're alluding to even making this video to begin with, considering how widespread the situation was. But maybe I'm missing something, but I'm also putting into question how much she's even a good example of this. Considering next to none of the tweets I could find addressing her about this were really harsh or beyond just disappointed that she was playing a game that supports someone who does not have trans people in good mind. Those who were actually angry weren't so for her playing Legacy, but it was that she purportedly banned the word trans in her chat, suppressing any concern that her fans might have had that she was playing Legacy, a notion that she's annoyingly dismissive about herself because these people weren't her fans or weren't streamers or we're only believing what Twitter says when that's just objectively not true by what I can find. Um, <laughs> so I guess I'll explain how moderation of a large channel works for people who are V-tweeters or just blindly believe what random people on the internet tell you um, instead of fact-checking for yourself, which is very easy to do if you have a Twitch account. You don't have to be a streamer which most of them are not. Um, <laughs> if a term is blocked by someone, you see a very specific message saying that your message wasn't posted because of conflicts with the moderation settings. It literally tells you that this word is blocked. If a word is caught by automod, you get a completely different message. And as a large streamer, I have pretty strict automod. I think a lot of large streamers do because people people try to just spread hate. So we by default have pretty intense strict rules. And when you have an automod with level two, we check this, by the way, it's not hard to check it. <laughs> when you have automod with level two um, across the board, which is some filtering, uh, two shields, it automatically holds certain words uh, that it deems as harassment so that your moderators can approve it and then it's put into chat. And like people just randomly went into my chat trying to find things that Automod held, I guess. Yeah, so there was a Twitter post that was making rounds by a user named Festival Sketch that demonstrated getting timed out for posting trans rights or human rights in the chat. If we're going strictly by the things that Silvervale talks about here, that was a choice made by Automod because of the messages that Festival was given. But as a streamer and moderator myself, I decided that I and three friends would try to help corroborate this notion. And so we played around a bit with Automod ourselves, and what we found was that Silvervale actually is not a 100% honest about what happens when Automod specifically catches you. 
Hey, so would you guys like to assist in a bit of a in a bit of a hmm? a, a test? Would you guys like okay. to help me test something? Yeah. All right. You guys know where my Twitch is at, right? Yes. Yeah. I think I know where this is going. <laughs> you probably know exactly where this is going, cause uh, I'm about to go in to my creator dashboard and turn on that funny auto mod. Okay, auto mod rule sets. <clears throat> Let me go back to my chat here real quick. So we have it set to level one. Let's set it to level two. Say, y'all know what everyone chat. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see how how accurate this is. Put. Tr oh, it is. It is held. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is held message for a reason. So, what do you see on your end, Zenny? Uh, nothing yet. Uh, I j I just put my stuff in the chat already. I put trans rights. No problem. Let yeah, me see. You had, you had no problem with it. Zenny just put in trans. And we just got put in trans. By it. Oh, there we go. So, yeah. Hey, okay, hey so your message is being checked by mods and has not been has not yet been sent. Now I'm going there... to uh, I'm going to allow I'm gonna allow one of your message and then I'm going to deny the other. Okay. And I want you guys to tell me what it says on your uh, on your ends. Okay. Your message wasn't posted due to conflicts with the channel's moderation settings. So just send me send me that screenshot too. It was Let's, okay. Yeah. So Someone type in the word address, because that is a blocked term on my, my channel. Hmm. Yes. Your message wasn't posted due to conflicts with the channel's moderation settings. Okay. Huh. So I, yeah. So I, I went in and, and, and reel out the word trans, so let me let me go ahead and click that, that word. Let me click that allow button. Now type the word trans again. Now that, hmm. now that trans is a permitted word. Oh, message not sent. The message is identical so, to one So scene. why? So that was so in the last three would, seconds. I, I have to say, so why is it then that, why is it, right, mm -hmm. that if, if, if we are, or if, if you are allowed to post trans rights or human rights in Silver Veil's, um, chat, right? If, mm -hmm. if we were allowed to post that word in Silvervale's chat before she started streaming Hogwarts Legacy, why therein could they not do it during Hogwarts Legacy if it was just Automod doing so? If trans was hmm. an allowed word that Automod would have permitted, hey, Susie. why then? Susie. What? Do me a favor, can you put it back to trans not permitted because her argument was that she did it so people couldn't type in transphobe. Oh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, let me let me go ahead and delete that real quick. <laughs> so yeah, mm -hmm. now try it. Now try it. Oh, so Automod doesn't even pick it up. Oh. Automod doesn't even pick it up. Yeah, okay, so it was a timeout and it was message deleted by moderator. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, Time one of y'all out. Uh. So let me let me go back to the chat here. Time one of y'all out. Uh, time out. Ah. <laughs> so what, what was your what is what said around your message? The message that I used to to time you out. All right. Everything says it's the message was deleted by moderator. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, let me that's try typing something in. Yeah. Well, no, because you'd be timed out, but that's what I fucking thought. I, well, I there thought we go. Like, so that means... Yes, that I means am. In accordance, in accordance to that clip. Well, I, it, does, it doesn't matter that you're timed out. I can literally untime mm -hmm. you out, whatever. But So in accordance, right? In accordance mm -hmm. to the clip that was posted in response to Silvervale saying that it was Automod and shit like that, the, the clip that's going around on Twitter... So a moderator had to do that. That was no auto mod. That was a moderator in Sil that is one of Silvervale's moderators or Silvervale herself. So the TLDR is Silvervale says that her moderation was at level two, right? But at level two, Automod doesn't time out people for typing something like that. 
Automod clarifies to a person being caught by it that their messages are being approved by a moderator, meaning a person has to approve it. And if they don't, that's when you are told the messages weren't posted due to conflicts with moderation settings. Because what it does when you deny a message like that is that Automod adds the term to the blocked messages list. Conversely, a message that would previously be allowed wouldn't get caught by Automod at all because an approved message would have been put into the approved words list, meaning Automod wouldn't even consider it. Silvervale had to get a mod to time out Festival, and you can make the argument regarding whether Festival was doing this to stir the pot or not, since they weren't a fan or previously following her, but if there were only two messages that caused them to get muted about it, what are we to take from that? Now, I wouldn't say she's transphobic. I don't know Silvervale enough to say one way or another. This whole situation is my first time even knowing of her existence. And, you know, to that I have to apologize. So, for all I know, this could be a matter more of not caring than it is actual malice, since her mods would have been able to fix that word ban during her 7 hour stream, but regardless of whether it's apathy or transphobia, I'm not a huge fan of the dismissive tone, nor the lies by omission she's pulling in this situation. Now, I know she claimed to be doxxed about it, and in all fairness, I did find a source that said she was doxxed during the time frame between her playing Legacy, but the docs itself doesn't seem to be all that connected to her playing legacy. Or if it is, then it's not at all demonstrated through what we're given, since Nanners and Amaranth were also targeted and neither have played the game. Maybe it's just the stress of it all getting to her? If I'm to give the benefit of doubt, I could maybe see that? I mean, I was stressed getting doxxed all throughout 2020, so I can see it. But this idea that her getting doxxed was because she played the silly wizard game only conflates the boycott with the horrendous actions of doxxing. But that on its own is kind of a problem, considering it now makes the boycott look like it's full of people that would support that behavior, and lead to videos like Blaze the Movie Fans here. By the way, to the person on Twitter saying that she didn't have music at the end of her stream, I want you to know I downloaded my copy straight from the source, the music was there. So the three instances that I know people would use as recent examples of people being harassed for Hogwarts Legacy might not even necessarily be valid ones, with the first two either being horrendously overblown or self-inflicted, and the latterest one being muddied at best, because again, I simply cannot find anything that corroborates the harassment claim specifically connected to the Silly Wizard game in Miss Vale, but even if all three of the examples I just finished talking about were strictly examples of harassment, that girlfriend review story wasn't overblown that Zeppla didn't try to antagonize people, that everything Silvervale went through was still findable, that would have been in response to them already buying the game. Not the sheer mention of interest within it. So where is that harassment actually coming from? Again, I don't even disbelieve that it could happen. People do go too far with their concern for problematic content, but I'm gonna need examples if I'm to believe mere interest has been getting people villainized. Hell, in regards to Silvervale, when her audience caught wind of her streaming legacy, most of the tweets I could find were giving her the benefit of doubt and hoping that she just was oblivious to the heinous things JK said about trans people, with others showing passive disappointment over it. No one really villainizing her about it, at least for what I could find. I don't know, maybe Twitter purged everything from the public. It wouldn't exactly explain the lack of evidence on places like Kiwi Farms and 4chan, places I also in desperation dove into for any scraps of evidence of this harassment, but I I don't really know what I should have expected from sites that will often propagate anti-trans propaganda for the memes and milking wool cows. I kind of just figured that if it happened that they'd be on the ball of archiving that abuse, wouldn't you? And not to exhaust the point further, I really have looked. I spent a whole day and a half on just this one point alone. Like, I did find a whole account on Twitter talking specifically about the supposed pushback for playing Legacy, and I've browsed through their posts, watched a couple of their streams, but outside of some rather skeptical takes in regards to Silvervale's breakdown stream, some admittedly taking it a bit a step far. I'm not saying everyone boycotting is perfect, alright, I tend to be more critical than that, and I've definitely seen the grifters. Alongside some people thinking that her end card is a bit of a silly juxtaposition to her crying on stream, which I would maybe argue not the time. Everything else this dude says is harassment is, at worst, just people being either disappointed and vocalizing it, 
or memes that he would later dismiss when they're pointed towards the opposition, such in the case with the Pikami stream, another instance of supposed harassment that I can just not find much of anything actually proving happened. As you can see, the tweet is now is now deleted, and um, these are some of the responses to uh, to her. Um, <laughs> as you can see, uh, it, it's um, it, it's it's something. Please consider that the door is uh, is that way, uh, and be careful it doesn't hit you on the way out. Just let Pika enjoy the enjoy the game, and if you don't like it, don't watch it. What does it mean, Kyle? Uh, don't come back if you're not interested in, in respecting Pikami. And you know, these are the vile comments that this person uh, uh, was describing. Just the worst of it is just telling this this person to just go the fuck away. Which is, you know, overblowing all issues on all, all fronts. Vile comments. Yeah. Th th this is pre pretty much the, the most extreme one. Me meing on him. This is the crux of this controversy, by the way. This entire notion that trans people and allies are harassing these streamers over playing the game is the entire argument. It's the center point of specifically Blaze the Movie Fan's video here and is widely being spread on Twitter causing a war against trans people. So I want to believe this happened. It's that important. But when there's zero evidence of it, I feel like I'm being gaslit. Blech. Look, at the end of the day, if this is happening, and for the sake of getting to the fucking point, we'll just say it is. Just because I didn't find it doesn't mean it didn't happen. I could have just overlooked something crucial, after all, I am merely one person. Then in that scenario, I do agree with this particular stance. Villainizing people who are interested in the funny wizard game doesn't help trans people. It invokes a sense of us versus them, and just immediately pushing those who are otherwise supportive of us away for this one act of spending $70 to a billionaire who does make money on tons of other pieces of merchandise that we're just casually overlooking for some reason, would only invoke a sense of alienation for allies. Might even push them into being trans folks because now they can generalize the entirety of the trans community is like this. So in that sense, you're absolutely correct. And I'll even take it a step further considering my own connections with the community that the distancing of streamers playing Legacy can also be a little harmful because you're homogenizing the community as a whole and a lack of diversity within a community doesn't exactly help make a change because who's going to be the one to actually educate the cisgenders and all this if we're all gone? That one particularly goes to that website that told people if streamers played the Funky Wizard game in an effort to ostracize them. To close out this lengthy interjection. I would just like to apologize to the Harry Potter Discord for sparking up a bit of a shitstorm. I don't know if any of you will stumble across this video or what have you, but I didn't mean to do that with my question. I'm glad it was productive, though. Let me tell you something. If you want to fight for trans rights, you shouldn't villainize people who are simply being interested in playing Hogwarts Legacy. That is not acceptable in any way. Just let people play the games that they want to play and have fun. There's no harm in that. See, normally I'd be one to agree. Don't let problematic people ruin your enjoyment of media you like and all that jazz. And to a degree, I can begrudgingly say that if you really think there's no harm in Hogwarts Legacy, then I won't try to talk you down out of it. I'm a little disappointed, but what's one rando on the internet's approval gonna do for you? However, because this is a video with the intent of explaining the boycott, I will explain that Rowling is a bit more of a complicated case, and Hogwarts Legacy has become even more so a complicated case when the narrative around it has gotten so muddied, as indicated by everything that I just went over in the last interjection. See, obviously there's the surface level intent of boycotting a well-known turf in the name of trans rights, a notion that I think anyone can get behind even if you disagree with the boycott. We should be all in agreement that it is your right to be able to boycott whatever you want for whatever reason you might have to boycott it. And while I think there's a population of people that would see that as purity thing, where we would then have this big slippery slope fallacy of why support anything when it's all blood money, a notion that I hear oh too commonly surrounding this debate in particular, most recently from Video Game Donkey of all people. 
Here I am with the new game, Harry Potter Legacy. Sorry about that, everybody. I did not know about the whole situation behind that game. So instead, we're going to be playing the new Rick and Morty game. I feel like I need to apologize again. I did not know that the dude who makes that game was a sexual weirdo. So instead, we're going to be playing Overwatch 2. Okay, apparently the team behind Overwatch was doing some really messed up stuff behind the scenes. So Okay, apparently the team behind Assassin's Creed was doing some really messed up stuff. But this is also a notion that Rallying herself has parroted in an attempt to get a quick dunk on a trans journalist, saying that continuing to support such a hateful person after they went mask off is a rather harmful action, but doesn't begrudge anyone who might still have their own merch and copies of her work that they had beforehand. Which, honestly, is a fairly nuanced take, I think, and it's one that I personally find myself agreeing with, since if you've already bought merch before JK revealed her more problematic side to the public, truly you're not doing more harm in just keeping said merch around. But again, that's just my take on the subject matter. I'm one person, I'm no monolith. However, with that said, the boycotters like myself are not supportive of the beliefs of someone who has strictly said future purchases are a tacit agreement of her beliefs. She has made buying Hogwarts Legacy a statement, and it's one that puts fans of the series in a rather precarious position. Far detached from the concerns about J.K. Rowling's view of trans women and the personal decision to not buy this game, this entire campaign is no longer about combating transphobia, it's about feeling justified in harassing and berating people online over a video game. These cry bullies work under the delusion that they are the good guys in this situation, fighting what they believe is the mistreatment of trans people by mistreating everyone, including trans people, who have the ability to separate J.K. Rowling's opinions from a game that she had zero involvement in producing. She says that if people buy it, she sees that as a win explicitly. It helps align her pocket, and whereas I cannot find any actual evidence of her saying so, it's been alleged that she might be using the profits of the game to raise money for charities that hurt trans people. Of course, though, with no evidence, you can take that part with a grain of salt. With that said, I wouldn't say it's too far-fetched of an ideal, but more on that later. The point is that separating the art from the artist in this particular scenario has become harder to do when she makes the series an exception. That said, of course, the argument is that if we don't buy it, then it's not like we would win anyway. Boycotts rarely work. JK lives in a castle for crying out loud. She's got legitimate political power in countries that she's not even a part of, much less the one that she lives in. She knows how much money she gets from royalties and Hell, much to the chagrin of everyone protesting, this controversy does help get more eyes on her books, her movies, and her messages. Whatever your opinion of this situation is, there's one thing that is undeniable, and that is that this game may actually be one of the most successful launches of the year. It's already topping bestseller lists for both PC and console. People are viewing it on Twitch like crazy. And here's the thing, the sales for this have probably been supercharged because of this controversy. Like half the shit I know about this game has been force fed to me because social media platforms love that algorithm. Engagement, engagement, engagement. Especially because the only people that are gonna be hurt in this situation are content creators. Right? How many times have we seen backlash on social media about a thing and then it just not in any way affect how many people actually played the thing. Especially because everything about this ends up promoting the game. Even inaction or the absence of it becomes a news story. But that doesn't have to be the point of the protest. Like, if boycotting and protesting does nothing, why boycott or protest anything? It once again comes back to the slippery slope of never take a stance against making any sort of change ever because you just can't. And like, that's such a defeatist mentality to have. And it's really easy to have that mentality when you're not the target of bigotry and harassment just for being a minority in your country. The point of boycotts and protests ultimately come down to getting a message out there message that unfortunately has been muddied by both bad actors and grifters, but a message nonetheless. And no, it's not about control, no matter how many people want to misconstrue it as otherwise. It's a message saying that we in the LGBT don't support the bigotry and misinformation railing spreads on her gigantic platform. That we stand more in favor of trans people being treated as human instead of monsters and groomers just for merely existing. That there is some form of moral outrage against her transphobic beliefs, that's what a boycott is for at the end of the day, and it's harmful to just do nothing for the same reason it's harmful to do nothing in an election. Because it looks like complacency to the status quo. Come on guys, this is politics you learn about in middle school. Or at least I did. Again, I know there's bad actors, I know there's grifters, 
Hell, there are people who pretend to be a part of a cause to be more of a detriment. This happens in any cause, as someone who once supported the original Gamergate ethics in games journalism controversy back in 2014. I could tell you that for free. Though, looking back on that, even that era was a bit of a mess too, but I'm digressing. Back to the point, since Rowling has made Hogwarts Legacy a definitive statement, which means the rest of us have to make it a statement in retort, this has obviously caught the attention of transphobes from outside the Potter sphere who are now gravitating towards the funky wizard game to stick it to them trunies or whatever the plural slur for trans people are. I've literally seen this effect firsthand, and in case you're not catching on what that means for a trans person, it now means that a community that was once safe will now be introduced to people who do not have the best interest of trans people in mind. Even if these communities are otherwise pro-trans. Because what you're saying, buying this game in retort to trans people saying, hey, let's maybe not give the money to the bigot, is that you see our concerns as less important than nostalgia and entertainment. I think to close out this interjection, I'd like to read off an excerpt of some tweets by a user, Virtual Lily, who I think was able to put what I'm trying to say into the best words. <clears throat> the reality is that trans people are under immediate threat, and it's been worsening for years, especially the last 10. Some of us are even scared to be open with the trans tags in fear of harassment for just existing, let alone any game. The online social bubbles are being thwarted with reality, that we live in a wild dystopia for a portion of our population. Trans lives are being torn apart in very real ways every day. We wanted to tell you this and be given support for that, not to hear, but I like video game. Has this caused social chaos, turmoil, and a lot of hurt for audiences, online groups, communities, and more? Absolutely. But has this had the impact in bringing everyone to the table on very real problems for real victims, your friends, family? This is the point. This is the goal. I see a lot of people very worried. Don't be. If anything, the shifting of groups and friends is likely to bond you stronger, especially in the trans community, who need unity and concise resources to stand in court today and cry out, I am here. I am a person. I exist. To those who have parted ways with the trans community, because you didn't like being talked to in such a manner, and you have a right to choose how you consume media, go for it, do you? But what will you do after the 40 plus hours in the game are done? What's the long term? That's the other side trans people know but don't say. For us, this debate goes on. It doesn't stop. For y'all, it stops when everyone has completed and 100 percent the video game with sticks and sparkles. Maybe trans people haven't been super patient. But now you know. Games, just like, because half is a fiction, are entirely fakes or not. Blaze, if we were talking about the anti-Semitism scene within the game, that's one thing. But that's also not something that I, as someone who is not Jewish, can really speak on. The discussion surrounding Hogwarts Legacy is about Rowling's very real transphobia. This isn't the fiction to reality argument you want it to be. That said, I do have connections to people who could speak on anti-Semitism more, and if you want to hear that perspective, we can get them in the video. Hey guys, Lactose Intolerance Gaming here to be an actual Jew in the commentary community. So here's the funny thing about that argument, Blaze. That idea can only begin to be true if what is being depicted is entirely fictional, which in the case of anti-Semitic stereotyping and Jewish imagery used in Hogwarts Legacy is not the case. To begin, let's dispel this stupid notion that there aren't blatant anti-Semitic stereotypes that went into the creations or popularizations of certain fantasy races such as goblins, dragons, vampires, and dwarves. If you honestly think this is some made-up SJW shit to protect the Jews, how about checking out Tolkien's admission that he based dwarves off Jewish stereotypes and how he regretted those depictions after receiving letters from Nazis complimenting him on them. But let's go into stuff that's actually based off of stereotypes first, and I'll stick with goblins as they're the most relevant to Hogwarts legacy. The way goblins and hogleg and hot pot as a whole are portrayed is an allegory for the most common anti-semitic ways of depicting Jewish people, specifically business owners. They're shown as shady, silver tongue, hook nosed, obsessed with greed, capital, and control, and are in leagues with higher world powers to control the world from the shadows. While a few of these stereotypes can be applied to other groups as well, together they form a disgusting anti-semitic caricature. Adding on to that is the goblin artifact, which is a horn used to rally troops and generally annoy wizards. It's games, words, not mine. 
This is meant to be a reference to the shofar, which is a ram's horn blown every day of Elul in the morning aside from Shabbat, as well as during both days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. To keep it brief, symbolically, the shofar is there to wake the Jewish people up to the fact that the year is ending and to both steal yourselves as well as search for forgiveness. There are 10 explicitly stated reasons by Rabbi Saadia Gaon as to why we blow the shofar, but aside from it reminds us of the war cries of our enemies as they broke into the temple in Yerushalayim and destroyed it, and it gives us hope mirroring the sound of the great shofar far that will call together the Jewish people who are scattered to the corners of the earth at the time of the coming of Mashiach. Not many have too many parallels to Hot Pot Goblins, however the point still stands. If JK can get away with creating an anti-Semitic stereotype with real Jewish parallels integrated into it, if Tolkien has to apologize for his depiction of dwarves, and if vampires are still keeping blood libel alive, then you can't deny how fictional depictions of real world groups can lead to those memes and ideologies being spread further. The thing Things being depicted are dangerous because they are real. And you know what makes this even more fucking ridiculous? I have been discussing this on my Discord server. In the politics section of my Discord server. And someone on my Discord server brought up a good point. And that's the fact that J.K. Rowling herself isn't even fucking involved with this fast news Harry Potter game. She isn't involved at all. She is just the one who made the Harry Potter franchise. But aside from that, she has little or no involvement with the game. And, and you know, that makes this See it even more fucking ridiculous. Oh, and now we have this counterpoint. JK Rowling isn't involved. She's not a developer. She's not a writer. Therefore, she's not getting any money or at the very least an insignificant amount of money from Legacy. So do it for the developers. Well, we'll get the obvious counterpoint out of the way here. She still makes royalties. It's still her intellectual property. Avalanche Software needed to buy the rights to the Wizarding World so that they could make this game. JK has acknowledged that she still gets royalties, so have the developers, and we'll come back to them here in a second. So to say that JK gets nothing out of this, just on the basis that she wasn't a part of the team that actually created the game, is just flat out inaccurate, and so I don't think we should really take this stance as necessarily that seriously, especially when some of the developers themselves have also said they don't support the game. Parker Hartzler, a real-time technician on the game, flat out said that he wouldn't buy it as the least he could do as an ally, and the only reason that he wound up working on the game at all was because it was his first job in the industry, and if he hadn't shown up to work, he would have been fired and promptly homeless. Going on to say that, had he more influence in the company, he would have been a staunch advocate against even picking up Legacy to begin with. For those paying attention, this is usually what the phrasing means when people say that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. He was a junior in the company, it's like trying to change the menu at a McDonald's as a vegan cashier. And it's not like his Twitter doesn't align with those beliefs, he's been very openly pro-trans for as far back as 2021. And this was just a brief glance, mind you, it's not hard to find who's an ally and who isn't. I suppose in counter-argument, not every person who helped on the game was against it. After all, Greg Ellis of Dragon Age fame went on to talk about how great working on that game was, so it's not like you're supporting everyone against their will. Dear Colonites, recently a small vocal mob of social justice warriors attempted to have me and my voice actor Greg Ellis tossed into the cancel culture wastelands. An ignorant few bigots made wild aspersions, outlandish misrepresentations, and slanderous vulgar claims of transphobia and racism and shared them loudly with a few impressionable more. However, one might argue that that's not all good news. So impressed by Ayan's support of a woman and fellow artist, and by JK's recent championing of young illustrators on social media, Greg retweeted his support to both women. Clancy then retweeted his support. Then the mob came for them both, accusing them of being, of all things, transphobes. This spurious assertion would be laughable were it not so harmful, both to Greg and Clancy's reputation and also to the greater transgender community of which Greg and Clancy are allies. One of Greg's closest friends is transgender. 
I'll have to explain what that whole ordeal is later. Black lives matter. And they don't matter more than anyone else's. I love. I love everyone. I support everyone's life choice and decision to love whomever they please and to identify with whatever gender they prefer. So yes, all lives do indeed matter to me. I think it's sorry and very sad that this sort of statement has become negative in our society when I meant it only as a statement of equality and affirmation of the intrinsic value of every single human life. Like, Greg, buddy, that's not why people were using the term Black Lives Matter. That's not why people get angry at those who use the term All Lives Matter. Like, these things are contextual, and my guy, you were ignoring it when people were trying to inform you about that. That's why you were called a racist. So, Greg being one of the pro-legacy side is a little telling. Do talking about how much he followed the works of Jordan Peterson, Candace Owens, and the Rubin Report are all certainly red flags, at least in my book. Never mind the anti-mask rhetoric he espoused during 2021, the aforementioned All Lives Matter hashtag usage whilst spreading a picture of a child who was murdered by their parents in a frankly distasteful display of virtue signaling, has apparently a history with restraining orders put against him for domestic violence, hence why he even goes by the name Greg Ellis to begin with, and lies about that domestic violence, saying it was the woman abusing the system with a 10-word lie, and has been a staunch defender of rallying since 2020, but again, that will get explained more later. Now, am I saying everyone who is pro-legacy is like Greg Ellis? No, not really. Of course, though, we only know of the opinions of two of the people who worked on the game, and it just so happens that one of them is a lunatic who LARPs as his most famous voice role. But generally, there's really no telling where who stands. I also want to make it clear that, as I said before, that it's not like you can't enjoy something that has a problematic creator or company behind it if you so choose to. Just know where your money goes, I guess. That's just kind of an important life lesson for anything, not just human rights activism. That said, if you know anything about game development, like even a tertiary amount, you know that not only have the developers already been paid for their work, but they might not get paid too much more from your purchase when they're under a publisher. It kind of just depends on how much the Avalanche higher-ups negotiated with Rowling and Sony. But we don't know that info, so proceed at your own discretion, I guess. George Lucas has more control on most of the Star Wars movies than J.K. Rowling does in that game. So yeah. I fail to see what this means to anything. It's not like George Lucas is espousing transphobic beliefs while saying buying the new Star Wars is a tacit approval of those beliefs. In fact, I don't think Lucas has ever talked about trans people, period. Or at least I can't find anything about it. Hey, as an aside, uh, did you guys know that there's an Archbishop George Lucas who is transphobic? That totally doesn't become confusing or anything. I see it, this is about a view of the the ball moving it was out and I stick to that I fucking love the movie ball and I think it's a fucking awesome movie this is 21 however I do not at all support any of the CIT shit behind the scenes what people did in during the production of the movie in the scenes I don't support it at all. And people who say that simply like I'm always the same or support it behind the scenes stuff is a fucking morning. Yeah, you truly are a fucking morning if you think that liking something or supporting the behind the scenes stuff is even remotely equivalent. I mean. 
not entirely disconnected, is it? Like, yes, there is that idea of separation between art and artist, and then there's also the idea of a purchase doesn't mean an endorsement inherently. But to say that they're inherently separate kind of ignores the effect giving money and a platform to a person in favor of a particular cause can actually create. I guess for a similar effect, people use that latter belief of follows aren't endorsements on a platform like Twitter all the time. And while yes, you can follow a person and not necessarily see eye to eye on every stance taken on any given subject matter, or even you might not see eye to eye on any subject matter with them, that addition to their platform, however, could be dangerous in certain circumstances because it's another potential audience that certain rhetoric is reaching, regardless of your stance. And if you're following an account like, say, Libs of TikTok, as an example, one that is run by a legitimate terrorist who partook in the January 6th riot on the White House, who lies about everything under the sun from protests to stances on pedophilia to even whether or not litter boxes were put into classrooms for furries, which people have started believing for, for some baffling reason, and then uses that platform to open schools and libraries to threats of violence, I'm gonna be a bit on edge about you because you are potentially allowing misinformation, especially about trans people, to spread allowing what amounts to propaganda to reach other people who might not be as educated about these subjects. Because friendly reminders, Twitter specifically does recommend tweets of those you follow to your own followers. But that's just in the realms of followers on social media. Actually giving money to those beliefs should be more of an obvious issue as to why this could lead to someone thinking a purchase is an endorsement. If you're giving money to something that directly benefits Autism Speaks, as an example, like let's just say they released a video game tomorrow that 10 million people bought, then you'd be helping fund a program that continues to portray autistic people as people to be afraid of. Like, I wouldn't say you'd inherently believe the teachings an organization like that would preach, but you're obviously uncaring about the effect they'd have on people with a larger platform. Oh, but isn't that cancel culture? I hear the distant yelling from the back row. And taking out my own feelings of cancel culture for a sec, because that's a whole different video topic for another day, no, it really isn't. You're not necessarily deplatforming people by not agreeing to furthering their platform. It could be that you're just keeping your own distance from that rhetoric, just being in your own circles. People do that all the time when they want to keep an apolitical community in their environment, and we do know those people. That doesn't necessarily mean those same people are trying to cancel those outside their circles. That's just ridiculous. And it doesn't even have to necessarily be political either. You could just not follow someone you think is a prick. That would fall under that very same notion. Someone you think is a danger to your community. Someone who spreads scams of stupid monkey PNGs. You know, those kinds of people. It's okay to draw boundaries, is what I'm trying to say. That doesn't mean that you're necessarily trying to tear down the platforms of others in a sense of control over them. In some cases it could be, but it doesn't have to be. Again, there's nuance here. Something that people tend to overlook for this situation. Now look, I will admit that I don't know much about J.K. Rowling. I haven't really read any of her tweets or what's the lips of her their own merits. I've only seen what all the people said about it, and many people think that she is a transphobe. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but if she has legitimately said that trans women are not women, yeah, then yeah, she is a fucking transphobe for sure. And if you hate her for being a transphobe, you have every damn right to. But you do not have the right to harass people or villainize them for simply being interested in the new Harry Potter game. And finally, we wrap back to the point of don't harass people. And I agree with that notion. I don't think I can make it any more clear that the idea of harassing people, regardless of circumstance, isn't particularly okay. Try to educate people if they are willing to be educated, but don't immediately jump to the extremes and all that jazz. That said, since Blaze here admits to not being super educated on the subject, I want to take this time to actually talk about Rowling's beliefs, and why there has been such a backlash against her to begin with, specifically in context to this boycott. So it started in 2018 when Rowling liked a transphobic tweet by a supposed troll account who repeatedly calls trans women men. One that makes allusions to men in dresses, specifically, which caused a bit of confusion. We initially were given the explanation that, 
Like a boomer, she liked it on accident, and nothing really came from that, just a bit of disappointment in people telling her to be more careful next time. To which was then followed by her following a known transphobe by the name of Magdalene Burns. And when I say known transphobe, I mean someone who was so against trans people that not only she compared trans women to actors in blackface, but said that being oppressed is a fucking fetish for trans women specifically in the same tweet. Which, uh, yeah, that's a little concerning. But again, you know, follows, endorsements, and all that jazz, so one could still give her the benefit of doubt on that one. I don't know too many people who did, but... You could. However, what you can't ignore is the explicit endorsement of transphobia when JK tweeted out a hashtag, I stand with Maya in 2019. Maya being in reference to a woman named Maya Forstater, who got in trouble for some of her own transphobic tweets and almost lost her job for them. If memory serves, she never did, but frankly, it's not important one way or another. Rowling's endorsement is still something to be taken note of, especially when it's worded the way that it is, with the ever-so-popular sex is real dog whistle transphobes use to avoid being called transphobic. And never mind how with chromosomes and biology, there's enough weird nuances to go around to the point that what these people believe are strictly male or female could be analyzed and picked apart if you know which direction to go in. But it also turns something that shouldn't be made into a game of semantics into a game of semantics, because you'll inevitably be met with the moving goalpost of what is a woman, and frankly, I don't know about you guys, but I just don't simply have the time with that one. JK would later dismiss the very notion of trans men and non-binaries by explicitly using the word women to argue against an article that uses the phrase people who menstruate. Never mind how frequently the word women is actually used in the article, she just didn't like that the inclusivity was there to begin with. Not every woman menstruates Joanne, even if we were talking cisgenders alone. After being called out for her transphobic comments, she makes an insinuation that we're not discriminated against for being trans, saying that she'd march with us if we were, and we definitely were in 2020. The Trump administration was awful for us here in America, but in the UK it certainly wasn't much better. There's kind of a reason the famous trans suicide statistic transphobes love to use to belittle us exists. Now it's 2023, and she's obviously not going to put her money where her mouth is now, especially not after the backlash she got for merely just saying sex is real. So she claims. She made a post on her website talking more about her explicit views on the matter, where she continued spreading her dog whistles and misinformation. Like, I'm not going to say that JK wasn't threatened or harassed. I've seen it directed at her, and frankly, it's a little fucked. Like, I'm sorry, no one deserves death threats. Period. End of statement. It doesn't matter which side of the fence you're on, it doesn't matter what you believe, just... Th this is not productive. However, this notion that the harassment came purely from the like alone could have been rectified with the clarification of how she truly felt about trans people in her initial liking of the transphobic tweet. Instead, we got Rowling doubling down on her stances of invalidation, playing the victim and hyperbolizing how many times she was cancelled being vague about those who reached out in support of her views to paint herself as more of a savior, making the whole ordeal strictly about her, which, if you were truly the ally to trans people you want us to believe you really are, you wouldn't fucking do that. Not that she's really that much of an ally anyway, considering all of her strawmen, appeals to emotion, hypocrisy, falsehoods, and half-truths, ending off the whole thing with the I have a trans friend approach, which, as someone who's been that trans friend before, if you truly were friends with trans people, I can guarantee you that they wouldn't like that either. Unless that trans friend is Blair White, but details. Point is, if there was any doubts in our mind before, that whole anti-trans manifesto just kind of cemented it for us. Then there was the mental health rant, where she went on this conspiracy in favor of the transitioners, a group of people I'm growing ever the less patient of, considering how frequently they paint us trans folk as delusional for trying to transition with their... Transitioning was a mistake, guys, woes. Like, we don't mind that you detransition for whatever reason you might have, but please stop roping us into it. Oh, then there was her new book. I remember being one of the first people to tweet about that. My tweet is currently swarmed with transphobes and turfs, all because I found a personal distaste for how, after all of this transphobic nonsense, after we finally learned how she views specifically trans women, the book that she claimed she was doing all that research for just wound up being a story about a crossdresser who kills people. And this was later followed by a book where she self-inserts herself into the shoes of a YouTube animator that gets doxxed and threatened. Gee, JK, that sure sounds relatable. I'm not even being ironic about it. Finally, in 2022, JK founded Vera's Place, a private support service for female victims of sexual violence. 
And if you think she plans on taking trans women into that help group, then you haven't been paying attention, frankly. In fact, according to an interview I found, that whole thing was opened because of her opposition around trans rights. Yeah, if you thought that I wasn't going to come back around to that the profits of Hogwarts legacy allegedly goes to anti-trans charities point, then I want you to know I've been sitting on that point since Interjection 2. It's not too far-fetched to believe that JK would be petty enough to donate the proceedings of her silly video game to something that's actively harmful to an oppressed group she can't stand. And that's where we're at now with the release of Hogwarts Legacy. Now, you also have to take into consideration the other side of this coin. What trans people were going through during all of this hubbub. Why trans people have fucking had it with the state that the world is in regarding to our basic human rights that we don't have. Trans people in 2020 saw anti-transgender bills get passed left and right, globally. These bills included, but were certainly not limited to, South Dakota banning trans youth from making decisions about their health care, London ruling that trans youth need a court order for puberty blockers, Idaho banning trans people in general from changing the gender on their birth certificates, Hungary ending the legal recognition of trans people, the UK making it so that trans people have to get medically diagnosed to be recognized as their preferred gender, and American trans people lost their protections from discrimination in health care and health insurance, basically making it to where, no matter which state you live in, if your health insurance decide they no longer like trans people, you no longer have any health insurance. Which adds to my anxiety over my own health as not only a trans woman who knows hormones will become incredibly expensive soon for me, but also as someone who is currently dealing with a health issue where I can't eat without the risk of throwing it up the same night and haven't been able to reach a doctor about it. The American healthcare system is a punchline for a reason, people. 2021 saw more laws and oppression towards trans youth, notably in Arkansas and Mississippi, mostly Arkansas, predictably, but again are not the only examples by a long shot. In fact, 2021 went down at the time as the worst year for the LGBT as a record-shattering 17 anti-LGBT pills were passed that year and more than 250 were introduced into state legislators. And there was apparently not enough backlash for any of those bills, mind you, hence why most, if not all of them, were passed. So, while trans people were being barred from basic academics and healthcare, we then had the Dave Chappelle special pop up. The one that punched down at trans people while we were already down on our face. Some might call that poor form. And knowing Chappelle's history, you'd think he'd agree to that notion, but no. He turned out to be also against trans people. On Team Turf, he said, after misconstruing what the JK Rowling controversy was even about. Caitlyn Jenner certainly didn't help matters either, because now trans folks can point to her saying, See? Even a trans woman agrees with us. And that's to say nothing of radically anti-trans doctors who infiltrated the medical field, succeeding in spreading a belief where anti-vax doctors had previously failed in. Because now we can say there's no scientific grounds for trans people to exist at all. We can now ignore all of the gender-affirming medical associations and focus on these fringed doctors that say trans people need saving from the so-called medical experts. Then, last year, we saw the extremism continue to grow louder and louder. The rise of ideals like trans people are groomers and trans youth is child abuse started reaching more mainstream discussions. No help by that aforementioned terrorism account I previously mentioned. Didn't think I'd come back to that one, did ya? It's these ideals that pushed yet more anti-trans bills in places like Florida and Pennsylvania. Texas started fighting for the ability to take children away from supportive pro-LGBT parents. And it's not like families could prevent these breaches of privacy either because the Texas Attorney General would have overruled them, and he did. We saw Alabama not only make gender-affirming medical treatments a Class C felony, but they also made it a requirement to out trans youth to their parents in schools. And Ohio was trying to pass a law that would require young trans athletes to get genital inspections, at least until the backlash caused them to change it to birth certificates. This is all the while violence against trans people was raising, jumping 41% from 2019 to 2020, with 2021 being the deadliest year on record by the Human Rights Campaign. And suicide rates of trans youth were reaching over 50%. Gee! I wonder if there's any fucking correlation there, you think? 
Now we're in 2023, and what we're seeing doesn't seem to be halting anytime soon. Arkansas is introducing a bill that would criminalize trans people from using the bathroom consistent with their gender identity, effectively labeling any trans person doing so as sex offenders. South Dakota has passed a law that tells doctors how to detransition their patients. Texas wants to ban gender-affirming care outright, even for trans adults. Missouri is planning on banning trans health care outright through a bill that also removes the exception allowing health care to patients in danger of death. And the list continues from Tennessee to Montana to Florida. It almost seems hopeless now that I've listed all out in front of me. So when you consider the context of how much trans people have been facing for the past well, frankly, decade, but we don't have time to go over everything. And with Rowling being a part of that problem, from her discriminatory sexual violence support group to her raising money for someone suing Stonewall, and just as recently as October, speaking out against a Scottish bill that would have removed barriers preventing trans people from legally changing their gender. To have Hogwarts Legacy drop when it did just agitated the problem. Even before the purported harassment of people like Silvervale, trans Twitch streamers were seeing hate raids from just having tags on their channels. I've experienced this myself to an albeit smaller degree, and the actual release of Legacy has made the issue worse, with plenty of trans streamers purporting an uptick in discriminatory and hateful comments. These have been proven, by the way, but the outrage of harassment is focused more on those just interested in playing the wizard game. I'm not going to say that this notion is politically motivated, but I am going to heavily imply it. To conclude, let's kind of wrap everything up in a neat little bow. J.K. Rowling has been a strong and powerful advocate against trans rights for years now. That much is no secret. She's been using that power and influence to actively stand against us, and knowing that she gets royalties from Hogwarts Legacy's release just means more people can help fund her fight against trans people. Along the release of the game, trans people were speaking out in hopes of just having their voices heard. Literally all we were asking of our allies was the simple request of not buying the game that lines in already powerful turfs' pockets. But some people couldn't even do that. And in response to that action were messages of disappointed fans of streamers who bought the game. Some taking it a bit too far, admittedly. The Girlfriend Reviews subreddit has been locked indefinitely, and both of our accounts have been permanently suspended after false reports claiming we were promoting hate and even threatening violence. I very much disagree that doing my job as a comedian, video game journalist, and Jewish woman, all while fundraising for LGBTQ charity, is promoting hate or threatening violence. But congratulations, I guess, because the last time an online community put us on their list, we had to ignore them for over a year before things escalated into false accusations of violent threats. This time, it took less than a week for that to happen and caused measurable damage to our livelihood by revoking our access to an essential website for content creators. But a majority from what I could see just showing their disappointment and distancing themselves from a community that was going to attract transphobia. And out came the outcries of streamers claiming to be harassed by these disappointed comments. Some saying it's more harmful to be called hateful than it is to actively enable that hate in your own community. This shook things up more for trans people because then the rhetoric changed to us all being cry bullies, actively bullying those who buy the game instead of acknowledging the act of harm Rowling has been doing to trans people. This has especially caused hate against trans streamers to rise because now it's just payback. You guys started it first, so doxing and death threats against trans people had increased, and all the while JK's royalty checks were coming in left and right because, oh boy, did Hogwarts Legacy sell like hotcakes. The situation has unfortunately shown people's true colors. If you've been watching this video thinking that all of this is nonsense, then frankly there's nothing I can do to convince you. You can go live your happy life without being burdened by things that obviously do not affect you, go have fun with your little wizard game. Frankly, I cannot stop anyone, nor did I intend to. For everyone else though, I hope I've been able to put everything into context. I want to make it clear, let me be transparent and all that, when I say that again, I do think that those who are on the side of the boycott shouldn't be actively harassing people. I think we should be taking the time to educate those who are obviously not in the know. Those who are maybe ignorant of the trans struggle to the extent that we experience. Personally, I typically like giving people the benefit of doubt myself as someone who is maybe more of a Blair White in the past than maybe I'd like to admit. Because sometimes it really is just ignorance and ignorance can always be fixed. I saw it happen in real time with the Harry Potter speedrunning community as I was scripting this video, so 
I think it's far more productive to try to have a discussion over an argument about it. Sure, some people don't care, and I don't really find myself having the patience to deal with those kinds of people, but that's just a personal thing. I know I have a short fuse, and I don't particularly care for intellectual sea lions. And I assure you, they will be in the comments of this video. But I'd be willing to educate those like Blaze here, who I know would be more in favor of learning things. I mean, that's what this whole video was for, after all. And I think that's the mindset that should be had going forward. On the opposite side, those who wanted to play Legacy but weren't sure about it before, you're not alone. I was in that very same position mere months before its release, saying that if anyone should profit from streaming Hogwarts Legacy, it should be a trans woman. Obviously, I have since changed my views on the matter and will not be buying it myself, but I was there. I understand you. I too loved Harry Potter growing up and was excited to be the Hufflepuff that I've always wanted to be. While I've seen people talk about how mid the game is, and normally I wouldn't be so invested in a game that plays like Dark Souls myself, I understand that the appeal is finally visiting the wizarding world to have your own adventure. This was a game that fans of the series have wanted for years, and it's finally come out. But the context of its release has made it being here far too bitter for me to justify a purchase anymore. That said, that's just me. I will leave the choice ultimately up to you, but I hope you now understand why people have been kind of side-eyeing those who buy it. Or you can just call us freaks and go on to play your funny wizard game. Isn't that right, Silvervale? We are going to play a game, and I will preface this, that I do not condone uh, the ideals of this author. I just want to be a fucking wizard. And I want to play my wizard game that made my childhood worth living and the adventures that I went on with my friends. And I'm gonna be a fucking wizard. And we're gonna enjoy this fucking game. And I will not be bullied by a bunch of Twitter freaks with nothing Red better child. to do with their goddamn lives. Be nice to people. If you want to make changes, go make actual changes instead of harassing streamers on the internet. LGBT people are awesome. Twitter people are not awesome. Fuck you. Wizard game! Well, that's that. I don't really expect this video to go well, but I hope I'm wrong. This was just a situation that I'm very close to and wanted to talk about in a way that I felt was productive. I usually prefer to talk about things that are more inconsequential and fun, I guess, but as I said, this one was eating away at me, so I just really needed to get it off my chest. And I hope when the video is actually out that I can feel catharsis and people are understanding, even if you don't agree, instead of, well, the stress and transphobia that I'm expecting, frankly. For more info, I'll leave a link to three other JK Rowling related videos I really enjoyed in the description below. I highly recommend these videos if you want to know more about the controversy surrounding her, and I think these three do a really good job explaining it better than I think I probably did, honestly. I also want to say that I do hope those who have been harassed can prosper moving forward on both sides of the coin. Even if I am skeptical of the extent of the harassment on one side, my skepticism isn't to dismiss the feelings of others from feeling the way that they did. You have a right to feel any way you do, and as I've been clarifying all video, I do believe that some people do go too far. I also want to state that ultimately this Hogwarts Legacy boycott is merely one step, one drop in the bucket, whereas we should be much more vigilant on speaking out and voting against the plethora of trans bills that have been being passed the last three years. I want things to get better. I can count my blessings being in a state that's pretty pro-trans, that actually starting my transition didn't really cost anything. But I'm always worried that something will change within my state that could see my healthcare getting taken away from me in a heartbeat, and I not be able to rectify that with proper action. I also in general want my friends who've been living in places with less trans rights to be able to live better lives. The world's kind of fucking us over and we kind of need that unity. We shouldn't be wasting all of our energy on a video game, even if it does have possible repercussions behind it. But in any case, I think I'm done rambling here. Have a good day, and take care.